Was it in fact the placebo effect? What exactly are the accusations against Huberman? And this is from Reddit, the discussion. He lied to multiple partners about being in a monogamous, exclusive relationship with them. I mean, I can't think of a single person with influential power who has ever done this. Coach Greg, in today's video, perhaps the biggest story of the year, trying to cancel Andrew Huberman. Of all the people that we could cancel, not Coach Greg, but Andrew Huberman. But why? And here I was thinking that everybody hates Greg Doucette. I mean, I literally just saw this in a video title. I mean, it's not like anyone else ever clickbaits anything. Clearly, everyone in the world hates me. Every person watching me right now, you hate me. And I don't think this is true. I think my parents said they love me once in my lifetime. I, I don't think every single person hates me. But yet the video title says they do. But yet I travel to the United States, to Birmingham, to London, and I'm meeting thousands of fans. And only one person said anything negative about me. And I'm not going to say who he is, but he's very big. He was a former IPB pro. Why would people suddenly hate Andrew Huberman more than Coach Greg? Well, let's see. Falling for Dr. Huberman, the private and public seductions of the world's biggest pop neuroscientist. All right. What exactly are the accusations against Huberman? And this is from Reddit, the discussion. He lied to multiple partners about being in a monogamous, exclusive relationship with them. He lied and serial cheated in order to maintain these multi-state partners, all of whom thought they were exclusive. The issue is the compulsive cheating and lying, not necessarily the multiple partners. None of his partners thought he was single. And so let me get this straight. He was dating several different girls all at the same time from different states, none of which thought he was single. All right, so he's basically dating more than one girl at the same time. Okay, I can see the hate. No wonder people are hating. What a horrible human being. I mean, I can't think of a single person with influential power who's ever done this. I mean, Bill Clinton, former president of the United States, he never had sexual relations with that woman, Monica Lewinsky, right? I did not have sexual relations with that woman. And let me think, Donald Trump, he would never, ever consider dating more than one girl at the same time. This never happens. No one with millions of followers, millions of fans would ever think of doing that, right? And I mean, you and I watching this right now, none of you have ever cheated on a partner in your entire life, ever, right? You don't know anyone that would do this. I mean, the divorce rate isn't 54%, it's 0% because no one ever cheated. Do you see what side I'm on so far? Oh, but it gets worse. He was repeatedly and with multiple partners emotionally abusive and manipulative. And wow, okay, so no one's ever done that. And so, for example, after leaving a girl's apartment, he would then text another girl in another state and say, Hey, my phone died. Sorry, I didn't get back to you. Meanwhile, he was actually seeing another woman. No man, no woman has ever pulled that stunt before. I mean, it's never happened to me. Oh, my phone died. Oh, I couldn't get back to you for 30 hours. Oh, it would never happen. No one's ever done that to Coach Greg. No one. And remember, I'm speaking completely out of jokes, fiction. No girl has ever said that to me, ever. He had unprotected sex with them on the implicit assumption of those lies, and one of his partners at least contracted HPV. Again, this has never happened to anyone. I mean, I personally know I dated somebody who had been married, who cheated on that partner, and got chlamydia, told their partner that it was a yeast infection, said you have to take these pills, and he was none the wiser. And remember, it wasn't with me, she was talking about her former life. And so does anyone think that this has never happened before? Think of how many people are cheating on their partners. He monetizes through association and promotion of dubious companies, AG1. I mean, heaven forbid he would ever make money selling and promoting supplements from certain companies. I mean, who would ever would do that? I would never, ever tell you to take Turk Builder or GO2 Max to use code Greg for 15% off. Why would I do that? I mean, heaven forbid the man is trying to make a living. Why would he do that? Shame on him. No wonder people don't like him. And after all, the title, Everyone Hates Greg, it's because I promote supplements. I watched the video. And so because I now promote supplements that I'm trying to make a living. And remember, I don't lie about those supplements. I tell you my honest opinion. I have always done so. And so if I try to make a living from doing what I love, Shame on me. Next. 
waiting to see where he should be canceled. He brands himself as a Stanford professor, yes, his lab is largely defunct, and he mostly teaches long distance. Let me get this straight. He says he's a Stanford professor, he was a Stanford professor, and still is to a smaller capacity, and you're mad because he does it through long distance and only part-time. I mean, I could get it if it was Bart K pretending he was a lecturer at university, he was doing this all the time, but he's not. He's actually a Stanford professor. He at least taught there in the past, he's in some way, in some capacity, still a Stanford professor. And so if he were to quit his job at Stanford, would he have to say, hey, I've never been a Stanford professor, I, I, I wasn't a teacher? If I made it to the NBA, but I don't play any games, I'm a five foot six manlet, but I'm sitting on the bench, I'm on the team, but I haven't played a single game. Can I say I play in the NBA? Hey, I'm an NBA basketball player. Hey, no, you're not. Well, my salary million dollars a year says I am. And so what is wrong with that? This is how society is right now. Remember, it's Andrew Tuber. Remember, he's a man. Now, if he was a woman, would that be empowering? Go, girl, get your bag. Slay, bae, you slay, you go, girl, you go get yours. Women empowered, we can do the same thing men have done us for years. You really think women don't do the same freaking thing to men? Oh, it's never happened to me. I haven't been cheated on by the majority of women in my life. No, it would never happen to me. The women compared time-stamped screenshots of text and assembled therein an extraordinary record of deception. And so let me get this straight, ladies. And I'm referring to the ladies that were dating Andrew. You find out that Andrew Huberman isn't faithful to you, that he's dating other girls, and rather than just saying, bye, talk to the hen, don't let the door hit you on the way out, you then text the other girls and say, can you send me a timestamp of when you went to his apartment and when he left and I'm going to compare it so that we can all now talk together and make him look like an asshole because we can't just move on and move to the next guy. You didn't work out. Move on. Find another man. Can you imagine if I started texting my ex-girlfriend's boyfriends to say, hey, what timestamp did you have? I want to find out if you cheated at this date and with this person at what time and with who? What? There was a day in Texas when after Sarah left his hotel, Andrew slept with Mary and texted Eve. They found days in which he would text nearly identical pictures of himself to two of them at the same time. Wow, he sent the same morning selfie to two girls at the same time. Heavens forbid he wrote two girls on the same day. Are you seeing where I'm going with this? They realized that the day before he had moved in with Sarah in Berkeley, he had slept with Mary. And so there's something about Mary. And so imagine that he slept with one girl and the next day moved in with a new girl. And get this, he had been with her in December, 2023, the weekend before Sarah caught him on the couch with a sixth woman. Wow. They were admittedly impressed with the logistical jiu-jitsu while Sarah was in Berkeley. Andrew had flown Mary from Texas to LA to stay with him in Topanga. And so while Mary was there visiting from thousands of miles away, he left her with Costello. He drove to a coffee shop where he met Eve. They had a serious talk about the relationship. They thought they were in a good place. He wanted to make it work. Phone died, he texted Mary, who was waiting back at the place in Topanga. And later, Eve, thank you for being so next, next level gorgeous and sexy. Sleep well beautiful, he texted Sarah. The scheduling alone, Alex tell me, I can barely schedule three Zooms a day. All I'm seeing from this is Andrew Huberman's stack, it works. Hey, he can handle juggle five women, maybe even six at the same time. How does he do it? Well, perhaps it's because he's getting to bed on time, waking up, getting some sunlight, having a friggin' ice bath, perhaps a sauna, cold plunge, and then he's leveraging his caffeine for later in the afternoon, avoiding caffeine in the first two hours of the day. Coupled with the fact that the man's potentially on HRT, the man's on a mission to get more minions than friggin' last time. Let's break this down. Let's just kind of digest all this. And so Andrew Huberman's a player, clearly. And I'm not saying it's okay for him to do this. I'm not saying he's morally right. I certainly know that he's hurt these girls. It's very hurtful to have somebody cheat on you to this extent. But does that affect the information that he's presenting? For example, when the former president of the United States was having no sexual relations with that woman, Monica Lewinsky, did that affect his presidency? Did that affect the decisions he made for the country? Last I checked from what I remember, he was a good president. And so does what he does with his downstairs when you're not looking, does that really matter? 
Well, maybe. If you don't want to watch Andrew Huberman because what he did with these women, then so be it. But does that affect the quality of the information, the millions of lives that he in fact helped? And so should I no longer go to bed on time, wake up, avoid caffeine for the first two hours a day, to look at the sunlight? Do cold plunges no longer actually work? There are no benefit. Was it in fact the placebo effect? And so seeing as I've gone through the exact, well, not quite the exact same thing as Andrew Huberman, people criticizing me for things I've done in the past. For example, did you know I had a criminal record? Oh, you can't listen to Coach Greg. How could you have anabolic French toast for breakfast when he had a criminal record for something he did over 12 years ago? Shame on you, Coach Greg. You have a negative past. Let ye who has not sinned cast a first stone. And so before judging Andrew Huberman for what he has allegedly done, look at yourself in the mirror. Are you an angel? Are you perfect? Have you never done anything wrong? Because if you have, how would you like it if it was happening to you? And so this is the problem. People are jealous. They're envious. Andrew Huberman making millions of dollars in the limelight. Everyone loves Andrew Huberman. And so you're thinking, I don't want him to succeed. I want him to fail. Andrew Huberman's here and we're over here. We don't like that. Let's tear him down. Get down here. Rather than saying, you're over there, I'm going to work harder than last time, like Coach Greg says, to build myself up. I'm going to meet you up there. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to do my cardio. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to study. I'm going to train. I'm going to make a man out of myself. Rather than doing that, we tear him down. And so another problem, we're putting this guy on a pedestal just because he's famous, just because he's intelligent. Perhaps he's a genius. I don't know. Do we really think that he's immune to doing immoral acts? That he's never going to sin? That he could do nothing wrong? Is he somehow a saint? Is it Saint Andrew Huberman or Dr. Andrew Huberman? And so what this tells me is you need to stop thinking that just because your idol is somebody that's intelligent, great at sports, good looking, tall, smart, educated, doesn't mean they're immune to the immoral things of the world. It can and will happen to everyone. No one on this earth is perfect. But if we're going to start canceling people for the things that perhaps many others have done, then are we going to cancel everyone? Just because somebody has a squeaky clean image doesn't mean they're squeaky clean. Dr. Andrew Huberman was perhaps one of the more trustworthy podcasters in the space, at least as it relates to the integrity of his scientific research on the health and wellness space. Can you trust him? Well, certainly you can't trust him to be faithful to you, but can you trust him for his information? My point the take home message from me is this. If you're a girl dating Andrew Huberman, you're probably not alone. But if you want to listen to his information, why would that affect you? Does the fact that Andrew Huberman can juggle five women at the same time affect the quality of information he's providing? I don't think so. And if I sold PDs in the past, does that mean the recipes in my cookbook don't work? Or that GO2 Max is not effective to help you have better cardio? Or that Turk Builder isn't going to actually work better than creatine? I don't think so. What does it matter? What you did in your younger years or even right now doesn't affect the quality of information that you're presenting. But remember, it's a free society. If you don't want to follow Andrew Huberman, if you don't want to follow Coach Greg, you don't have to. There's an unsubscribe button. If you don't like me, unsubscribe. Don't need you. If you want to keep following my videos, subscribe and click the bell button. Like the video. This is how life works. So I seem to remember a famous athlete. He goes by the name Tiger Woods. Has anyone heard about him? I believe he had 11, 12, 13 girls, something like that, all complaining about him. I also remember he had perhaps an addiction. He got into that car accident. He hurt his back. He was struggling. And for a while, people, they hated him. Tiger Woods was canceled. Oh my goodness. Look what he's done. But yet he then made a historic comeback. You remember how rare, how exquisite, how satisfying it was rooting for Tiger to win that elusive green jacket. And he did it and re cheered and rooted for him in spades. And so although it's perhaps hard for Andrew Huberman right now, I can tell you from experience, having gone through several difficult experiences in my past, you get through it. I do want to take some time to offer some commentary and address the New York Magazine article um, about Andrew Huberman. And remember, this is coming from the New York Magazine article in regards to Andrew Huberman. I'm not pulling this out of thin air. This actually a huge story. This idea that, you know, someone like Andrew Huberman, 
who has really blown up for being someone of high scientific integrity. How does that translate into your personal integrity? One. Great point. My personal opinion is personal integrity has nothing to do with scientific integrity. Just because you're perhaps cheating on your wife, partner, girlfriend, not being the nicest of human beings, doesn't mean that the scientific information you present is in fact incorrect. If you're cheating on your girlfriend or partner, it doesn't mean that you're cheating at your job or your work. These are two separate things. He also has extensively talked about you know, trauma and therapy, and he's had Paul Conti on multiple times. He's been a big advocate of that, but your personal um, way of carrying yourself in the world isn't maybe in alignment. Where where does the buck fall, right? So And so, for example, you could go to marital counseling from a counselor who actually had a divorce. They're your counselor, they've had a divorce, and so are you going to say, I can't learn from them just because they've been in a divorce? Be like saying, hey, I don't take advice from anyone who's not married. Just because you're not married doesn't mean you don't know anything about relationships. In fact, you might know so much about relationships, you choose not to get into them. But I will say that I do, in fact, know someone who had a relationship with Andrew Huberman before he was at Stanford. And so she has a friend who dated Andrew Huberman who cheated on her. There you have it. She has no proof of it. It's allegedly, but let's assume it's true. Does that mean you're no longer to watch Andrew Huberman, that his information doesn't make any sense? If Lance Armstrong took performance enhancing drugs, of which he admitted to, to win some of those Tour de France titles, does that mean he never raised any money for cancer? Are you gonna take your donations back? The tens of millions of dollars that he raised to fight cancer, do you now want a refund on the fact that you donated money for charity? And so I'm asking you, I'm not saying whether you should or you shouldn't, but does the fact that someone's cheated on their partner take every single good thing they've ever done to anyone else in their life is that gone is that void should they be canceled should they lose their job should they be outcast from society you leave the country we never want to hear from you again because you did this bad thing you cheated on your partner because if it is because if you say yes the world's going to be a scary place when you find out that everyone has sinned. No one on this planet, at least that I know, at least in the last hundred years, perhaps 2,000 years, is perfect. It's hard as a woman who has also been through that with past relationships. And so think of this. She's like, well, as a woman, I feel differently about this man. He cheated on his partner. Why is it relevant to say as a woman? What about as a man? Do you not think men get cheated on equally as often or perhaps more than their partners? Last I checked, divorces are initiated by 70 to 80% women. And so just because Andrew Huberman has potentially cheated on a girl doesn't mean that women need to get together, band together, and all men are bad. I do firmly believe that, you know, we can have professional and personal lives, and they can coexist. Exactly, you can have professional and personal lives and they can coexist. Imagine if people knew all the doctors, lawyers, firefighters, nurses, surgeons, whatever, name it, name a job, and the things they're doing behind closed doors that you would not want anyone to know about. Imagine if everyone knew every bad thing you'd ever done in your life. Something you did, something you said, everything was recorded. Imagine that life. Now imagine being in the limelight, under the public spotlight. Imagine what it's like. And so before you judge him and try to cancel him, think, what if it were you? Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. Don't forget to like the video if you like it. Watch one of those loops. And of course, for any of the supplements, the cookbooks, training books, coaching plans by me and my team, head over to our website, 15% off with code Greg. And of course, we have the free diet and training program, close to 50 pages. Also, become one of the 300,000 plus newsletter subscribers. Head over there right now. And until next time, I am out.